Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So, I really understand why people are so invested in the idea of karma. They're so invested in the idea of karma because you want somebody to pay for their sins against you, they, they, to pay for their, their, their transgressions against you, right? To pay for betraying you, backstabbing you, violating you, all, all the above, right? And you say, let the universe handle it. Sorry to say, but the universe is indifferent. And even if that were, even if it weren't indifferent, the person that you are trying to seek karma from, more often than not, was never really there to begin with. I read a lot. I like. I really like how nowadays as much as social media is fucking with everybody all the time if you use it in a way to educate yourself it is the best by far the best method of educating yourself that we've ever had assuming you know uh you understand you have like basic skills in media literacy and uh, and you know how to um basically how to form a hypothesis and then get to your conclusion in the most, uh, in the best, in, in, in the, in the most best practice, if that makes sense, right? The best practice of getting from your hypothesis to your conclusion, right? Basically just learning the scientific method and media literacy, right? Because the scientific method is like the gold standard of figuring out, figuring something out, right? Hypothesis, introduction, methods, discussion, and conclusion, right? No matter what you would want to figure out, if you take the format of the scientific method, it will give you a very thorough answer, right? So that's why I really have learned so much psycho. Like I did some psychology units in my uh, bachelor's. But I've learned the vast majority on it, of it on YouTube, literally just YouTube. And when you listen to, um, ooh, I'll even, I'll give you like one of my favorite, um, uh, he's, uh, he's a professor, Sa Professor Sam Vaknin. Uh, he's, he's an actual professor in can of psychology. I can't remember which university, but he... Oh, and, and he's a, he's a, he's a diagnosed narcissist. He has narcissistic personality disorder. And I only found him watching a documentary about narcissism. He was like towards the end. I'll try and see if I can find the documentary, but this guy understands human disorders so well, so, so well. And the way he explains about psychopathy and, and sociopathy and narcissism, they are not the same things. And I really hope people stop using them interchangeably because they are not, right? The way he explains how these people's minds work is that they are, at least for narcissists, they are in a constant state of grief, grieving uh, the person that they will never be. Right, they are constantly grieving. They are the, the the whatever it was that they were deprived from as a child was enough for them to kill their inner child and resurrect something entirely non-existent in its place. Right, sociopaths are kind of similar. In that they're also like this is a crazy thing, man. Like pretty much almost every disorder, uh, every personality disorder is just based off trauma, right? But somehow, you know, this is this is such a glorious place to keep birthing children into. So, with that being said, 
a narcissist or a psychopath or a sociopath will never get karma done against them, ever, ever, right? They will never have any sort of divine justice committed on them because they were not there to begin with. They were never there to be. Nobody's home. Nobody was ever home. These people have been and still are zombies moving through the fucking world. There's a... Um, in, in Buddhism, there's these uh, spirits called uh, pretas. Yeah, they're literally called hungry ghosts. And they are spirits that, I think, in, uh, when they were alive, they would just hunger for anything like sex or money or, you know, just drugs, whatever, whatever the case. So that when they die and they transform into a preta, they will never they will never uh, satisfy their hunger, no matter what they eat. They could eat garbage, feces, decomposing corpses. They will never, ever, ever, ever stop being hungry. And that, to me, exemplifies somebody who is narcissistic or sociopathic. They will never, ever get their fill because there's nobody there anymore. And these, uh, see the thing about psychopaths, and I talk about psychopaths often because people are so, they, they've been fear-mongered about for the longest time. Psychopaths are just born that way, right? It's not their fault. It wasn't their doing that they, uh, you know, somehow were born without the capacity for empathy, like completely, right? That's just how they are. Like, they didn't even ask to be here, just like any of us. But the most, see, a selective empath if i can say that, empath a selective empath is the most dangerous human being like without a doubt they are the most dangerous the second most dangerous is a psychopath who is also narcissistic they're called malignant psychopaths or malignant narcissists and i i don't know if it's interchangeable or whatever but let's just go with a, a narcissistic psychopath those people like you will absolutely never forget if you have encountered somebody like that like because they have the psychopathy but then they have the narcissism on top of that that they are like true and true like through and through monsters Mon like literally monstrous fucking people the most monstrous people you've ever met completely i think honestly a lot of religious institutions are filled with those people like that and it explains a lot. What kind of karma do you think will happen to somebody like that? What kind of justice do you think would be enough, right? They do have nerves and they do have reflexes and everything. I guess you could torture them. But at the same time, like, you know, what if... If you've ever done something wrong to somebody and karma has hit you, how did it feel? What, what, what was it about the karma that made it so uh, karmic, right? Like you said, oh yeah, this, this is definitely karma for that thing I did, you know? You having the capacity to feel that karma is something that somebody who is devoid of empathy and compassion and all pretty much all, almost all other signs of human life they don't care it doesn't register to them and it's one reason i like the thing about me i hold grudges i i i in fact i i, I hold i hold grudges like an olympic fucking sport I hold grudges. I don't give a goddamn. I still hate motherfuckers from middle school. I don't wish none of you bitches well. Fuck all of you. I love holding. I don't know what the hell it is about grudges. But at the same time, I do eventually just let go and just move on with my life. And it's, it's like you've dropped a burden, you know? 
it's like somebody threw a burden on you and then let's say you you get strong enough to just carry it around every fucking where all the time and you're like fuck them fuck them fuck them but then you're like you know the burden isn't even tied onto you you could just like drop it and keep moving on right and it's more so uh this 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 world itself is what makes monsters right nobody's born a monster this world turns people into fucking monsters there'll be days you'll do shit that you won't even want to look yourself in the f- you won't want to look yourself in the mirror right It's this world that does this to us. You are not weak like she was. You have the power to break this chain of grief. Anyone who tries to take them from me will get no mercy. And what if your decision ends up being the wrong one in the end? That won't happen because I'm not wrong. What's wrong? Is this messed up world? And uh the last video I posted about uh human extinction not being the goal has really shown me a lot of people a lot of people are invested in that goal. And it's just so fucking disappointing. It really is. Right? It is so just it's not it's a sentiment you can understand yes but at the same time and here's the fallacy of that kind of thinking there are people who already are enacting that process right now right how do you think serial killers rationalize it to themselves and that's the crazy thing serial killers are generally people who are like psychopathic or narcissistic sometimes they're both and that's why i mean they are fucking monstrous people right a serial killer's goal especially the most prolific ones is to kill without ever being discovered at all and maintaining that face of uh the local priest or the uh the the hired clown you know the one that comes and performs your children and everything you know the the homely man basically but even if that's the case they in their minds all of this all of us exist to we exist as a circus for people for serial killers right we exist as a circus and a buffet at the same damn time we like the reason why i still believe human like if you believe human extinction is the goal you are most likely like very uh you you you're very almost narcissistic right and here's the thing somebody can have narcissistic tendencies but they probably would not be a diagnosed narcissist they could be ex- uh they could be displaying what's called narcissistic injury right that hurt people hurt people kind of thing you might be very a, a very empathetic person but because of all the trauma and baggage that you have you have now you've you've tried to remold yourself into a narcissist when really you're just lying to yourself in the worst way right and i want to tell you right now for you to think that justifying a, like a totalitarian a totalitarian approach to humanity's problems in that way you are no different from a serial killer i i would love i i would i just want you to know that right now you are no different from a serial killer I want you to sit down and go find five serial killers and tell me how different you are to them when you tell me that 
you know, we just we just need one big cataclysmic event to annihilate all of humanity, right? Or in annihilate all life itself. Humans, even in our quest to, 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 to define ourselves, we found a million and one ways to not define ourselves, right? If it's all culminating in like, uh, why are we here? What is the meaning of life? Why does life have this? Or why is life so full of suffering and blah, blah, blah. These are things that we've been indoctrinated to, 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 to spit back all the fucking time, right? Even as early as, I don't know when Buddhism started exactly. Was it 300 BC or whatever? Yeah. And at that time, I, I just know at the time that Buddhism started, Hinduism had already been around like at least 1,500 years. It's, it's the oldest religion. The oldest continually practiced religion. And the Buddha himself, uh, Siddhartha, was born into wealth, right? He was a prince, if I'm not mistaken. And yet he experienced all these riches, all the finest things you could have in life. And he wondered why he wasn't happy. He left, he abandoned all, he abandoned all the things that we chase till now. He abandoned all of it. And he sought his peace. Now, uh, to be fair, I understand that is not a viable solution. And I think Buddhists themselves understand that this is not a viable solution for the vast majority of people, right? Which is kind of sad, but at the same time, you know, it is what it is. So, if that's the case, and if it's the case that it takes such few uh, just pathologically minded people to cause so much damage, the people in the prisons are always in the prisons. They're always the ones going back into the prison. There's no, like, there's very few years where like a whole group of people going into prison are just fresh faces like first offense type of things no the people in prisons are repeat offenders that's why the term recidivism exists to describe uh, how often a prisoner will reoffend. they are in and out and in and out and in and out of prison these are the people robbing raping, killing, you name it, assaulting. It's usually, a, depending on where you live, even if it's a very poverty-stricken place, it's usually going to be the usual suspects, the same groups of people. And from their own socioeconomic conditions, from the from the, you know, from the onset of their lives, they were basically predisposed to it by no fucking fault of their own until, of course, they started to understand, they, they started to experience the, 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 the law system and to, to understand that, you know, this is wrong or that is wrong. The thing is, these people know that they, they know what they're doing is wrong. They know what they're doing hurts people, but they like it. They like the fact that it hurts you. They are sadistic. They are sadistic because it, I don't want to, I, I would, I would maybe equate it to like being demonically possessed, but most humans are really demons to be honest, if I'm being honest, right? It's not really fair to just say, oh, they're probably, no, nah, no, nah, most humans are definitely like demon suppressed or demon possessed. One of the two has got to be, but at the same time, it's, it's probably the best way I can describe it. Because I humble, I, I, I'm not particularly religious myself, but I love using the term demonic. I feel like it conveys exactly what you want to say. Because human beings, even as much as we can be bad to one another, there is 
a level to which like people just clutch their pearls and are like, what the fuck? How could a, how could a human being do that to another human being? You know, that can't be of this world. This is this is this is something else. And to some degree, I really do think it is something else. It could be something else. Highly possible that it's something else. Even even if we were just to go, even if you were just to use the um the uh the clinical understanding of it. Disorders like narcissism and psychopathy and sociopathy are incurable. They are incurable, right? They're a developmental disorder. They are in fucking curable. You would have to find somebody who is dedicated to uh, uh, managing their themselves in that sense right and that's a responsibility we all have you know but at the same time these kinds of personalities their um their ability to uh to use people and discard people over and over and over again obviously can create a very destructive effect my point being the karma that you're waiting to happen to somebody was never a karma in the it was never karma in the first place and i say this as somebody who has seen karma play out in front of my eyes several times to people who you know <clears throat> i myself would have been like oh i should have done this or that but like i i didn't even have to do anything i just sat and watched right i literally just sat and watched as karma like whatever you want to call it like the, you know people who put themselves higher on a pedestal than you literally get like this uh, just a force of nature or something just like kicks the fucking pedestal from out under them and it's just it is the deepest sense of satisfaction i think i'll ever have and it's to the point where i don't even like except for here of course it's something i don't even gloat about right because it's just like you will gloat about it initially when it happens but then you're like wow because the moment you see karma happening to somebody right if you get vengeful about that, karma is just going to come for you. Just cause, <laughs> you know, just cause, just, just to show like anyone can catch these hands. That's how karma works, right? And, it, you know, karma itself is more about, it's more about how you take the karma inflicted upon you. Because it's not karma that you deserved, but it was, it, it is... You know, people create their own karma, you know, whether it's good or bad, and they inflict it upon others. Right? Yes, you inflict your good karma upon people as well. People create their own karma. It's not something you just wait to drop out of the sky. But waiting for karma to happen to somebody, it's like waiting for a puppet to have its strings cut off. That's what... that When you wait for karma to uh to serve you justice you're essentially just waiting for the puppet strings to be cut off of the puppet they are essentially they are puppets man that they are puppets that is that you know god damn <laughs> you know i'm going to sound so sadistic myself but they're essentially parasites on other people right we don't use these terms very often like parasites or viruses to describe people because i've seen how badly can, i've seen how badly it can uh, uh spin out of um uh control but people who parasite themselves of others there's nothing that really can happen to them except death of course but then if we're all gonna die anyways <clears throat> you, you you can sell i guess yeah i guess I, I i see no problem with celebrating somebody's death in that manner but at the same time as long as you know you see as long as you know that you yourself are obviously going to die as well and you don't know how you're gonna die as well i say it's all good you know me i, I give respect to people who have earned it in life and in death right you're not going to find me going to somebody's funeral who I hated and being like, oh, he's such a... Like, if I'm forced to be there, 
I'll just say I had to be here and I'm not going to lie to you. This and this and this. Because it would be a disservice to me and to the dead fucker for me to lie about our interaction, you know? So, if you've internalized that human extinction is something that would be make you happy, right? I guess you can, you can, you know, you can work towards it if you so wish. Wherever it takes you, just know that you've extinguished yourself first, right? You have extinguished yourself. When, when you consider that human extinction is the goal, you've basically become a, a virus that can talk. <laughs> because a virus has no mind of its own. It has no personality. It has nothing. It is, it is a container for its genetic material, and it doesn't care how and when it's, it is able to replicate it, it is, it's just going to do it. It's going to find the perfect host, replicate and replicate and replicate, on and on and on and on and on, right? So please don't sound like a virus, honestly. You, 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 I, 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 I hold you to a higher regard, right? Please don't sound like a human virus, okay? Thank you.